Okay, I found this old skillet. I have no idea where it came from. Okay, it's an old cast iron skillet. And what we want to do, we want to clean it up and we want to identify it. Then we want to season it and we want to use it to cook on. They're very good to cook on. Now what we're going to do, we're going to, just looking at it, there's no numbers on it. We can't find any numbers, but there could be numbers. After we clean it, we'll find out. But there's no raised letters and there's no made in the USA on it. So that means it's older pan. And another thing tells me it's from the 1800s, more than likely. Okay. This fire ring right here, okay, does not have notches in it. So that tells me it's an old pan. But there's nothing written on the back. Okay. Now, some of these pans are are worth money. Now, I'm not doing this to sell it. I'm doing this to cook on it. Collectors will pay a lot of money for these older pans, depending on what pan you get. Okay, if your pan has uh, markings on it, it's easy to tell what it is. But we're we're going to identify this pan, and then we're going to clean it up first, like I said. Stainless steel, that's the best thing in the world to clean it with. These are stainless steel, club pads, uh, but these from the dollar store, I think I paid, yeah, I paid like a dollar for them. The brass ones are the brass old, or the, uh, not brass old, uh, Brillo, they're, they're not any good, they'll tear apart. You want this. And then I'm gonna use cleaners, anything you got, Dawn, awesome from the dollar store, which is awesome. Uh, this is Mean Green Super Strength degreaser and cleaner and degreaser. We'll try some of that. Just anything you got, degreasers and cleaners. And we're gonna scrub it hard. We're gonna get everything off, try to get, get all these black things off. Now, if we can't clean it, which I'm pretty sure I can, if I can't get it all the way down like I want, I wanna get it all the way down to the metal, okay, before we even try to season it. And if I can't do that, I'll I'll get some oven cleaner, like easy off, and try. But put the original seasoning is the black that you see on here. It's it's flaking. It's flaked off in most of the most of the pan. It's an old pan. So we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna season it. Uh, we're gonna get a good oil and season it. Okay. Now do not use uh, olive oil. It uh, gets hot too fast. You don't want to oil to burn. You don't want your oil to smoke when you season in the pan for health reasons and also for the pan. Uh, you'll get free radicals into your pan if you heat it up too much. Now like a canola oil, you can go to 400 degrees on that. So, so that, that would be a good seasoning one. You can season in the oven or you can season it on top of the oven. And we're going to try on top of the oven first on the stove, we're gonna do it on the stove, and we're gonna see what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna use, we're actually gonna use animal fat. All right, uh, animal fat was originally used in all these old pans. Uh, they, back in the day, they didn't have canola oil, they didn't have uh, all these fancy oils, they didn't have uh, the oils that you, that you can use to season it with. So, I'm gonna do it like the old people did it, like they did in the old times. I'm gonna use animal fat. So we're gonna get some animal fat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. But let's clean it first. Get some numbers, see if we can find some numbers. There's gonna be numbers on it somewhere, maybe. And then we're gonna identify it. And then once we do that, once it's clean and identified, then we're gonna come back and season it. And see, once you season it, okay, you put a coat on here. It's going to be like a coat, all right? It's going to be a non-stick coat, all right? And this will be just like a non-stick pan, all right? And once you get your good seasoning, once it's seasoned good, you don't want to use metal utensils on here. You want to use, act like it's a uh, an expensive non-skid pan that you want to not knock the surface off, because you can knock you can knock your seasoning off. So you want to treat it. You don't want to clean it with salt. Some people say clean it with salt. That destroys your the seasoning on it. Okay. 
uh, you want to keep it wiped out and you want oil you know I wouldn't cook with olive oil with this pan you can but it's not a good seasoning oil okay canola oil is very good it'll go to 400 degrees you can cook with that you know so let's clean it up let's identify it and then try to identify your pan while we're doing it and then we'll get into seasoning it Okay, you ready to clean the pan? Yeah. Okay. Got my little helper today. She's gonna help me clean the pan. We got all, each got one of these things. I have the biggest one. You got a bigger one than me? <laughs> I'm not building. All right. Now, got the pan in a bucket. Mm -hmm. In a container. And we're gonna wet it. And we're gonna scrub it good, okay? Yeah, Let's put some dishwashing liquid in there. Some dome. Put a little dome in there. Go ahead and try it. Try it clean. I don't want to put too many horse chemicals in there with the little hands. Put a little fantastic in there. Is it cleaning up? We're gonna put a little this other stuff in there. Go ahead, clean it, scrub it. It's going to take a lot of hard scrubbing, but I got my helper, and we're going to do it up good. Is it painting? Oh, yeah, it's scrubbing. Yeah, it's cleaning it up. Okay, we're going to do a lot of rubbing. We're going to clean all around the pot. See all that stuff? Yeah, is the rust there already? See all the rust? Yeah. Huh? Yep. Anyway, she's going to help me. And uh, we're going to come back and see after we get it clean. Okay? How's it coming out? Good. Huh? Good. Good? It's rough, huh? Mm. All right, we don't want them chemicals to hurt your little fingers. We might have to get some gloves. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're going to clean it and then we're going to come back and we're going to film it. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Got our helper working. She got some gloves on to keep a little horse chemicals off the little fingers. Little hands. How's it coming out, girl? Not really good. It's a lot of work? <laughs> You're not afraid of work, huh? And grandkids come over to the house, they, we put them to work. Good job. A lot of rust on that pan, huh? Mm -hmm. She's cleaning it, though. She's cleaning it. It's good to have a good helper, though. It ain't afraid to work. This girl ain't afraid to work. Good job. I'm gonna spray some more of this stuff on it. Try not to get it wet now. Try not to don't. Maybe that's gonna help. It's gonna be a job to get all this stuff off of here. We're gonna do some scrubbing now. We might have to let it soak a little bit too, huh? I'm gonna go eat lunch. My mom's cooking some lunch. Yes, it'll leave it all out. And then we're gonna let it soak. When we go to lunch, get some more of this. We're gonna fill, we're gonna put some more water in the bucket. And then we're gonna let it's it. It's smelling good. Huh? Smelling good. It smells good? Yeah. And we're gonna cook on that. Don't let your pan slide off. Very good. Okay. We'll get back when the, we get it clean. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, we're in the shade now, but this garbage bag has been in the sun for about a day and a half. And we had a heat index of 110. 
down here in the deep south. Yesterday, anyway, it's a little cool today, this morning, but real cool. So, I'm gonna take our pot out and do all this one hand. Take our pot out, see what we got. Okay, look like we're gonna have to scrub it. Had the easy off on it. Looks like most of it's dried up. We're gonna squirt it with this hose. And then we're gonna scrub it. That's a lot cleaner. Put quite a bit of easy off on this thing. It's been cooking in the sun for, like I said, a day and a half. It's taking a lot of the crud off. So I'm going to get my Brillo pad, or rather my stainless steel pad, and I'm going to scrub it a little bit and uh, see how it's going to come out. Okay, we have uh, identified the skillet. After cleaning it up, it's made in the USA. Bottom number seven, ten and a quarter inch. Uh, this is not uh, early 1800s as we hoped for. It's in pretty good shape. It's in real good shape. A lot of cleaning done to it. Uh, Did a lot of cleaning. Now we're gonna we're gonna treat this. We're not gonna use the oil we said we're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna use a different oil, and we're not just gonna put the oil on and then heat it up. We're gonna use a special process, a little bit different process than that, I should say. So this is instead of a $200 skillet, this is at best uh, $50 for the skillet. But we're not gonna sell it. We're just keeping it for cooking. So next we're going to treat it. Okay, the way we're going to treat our pan, okay, our skillet I should say. Alright, we have flax. We decided to go with flax. This is a flax cooking oil. Okay, it's pretty expensive for this little bottle, a 16 ounce bottle that was about the uh, about nine bucks. Pretty expensive. And what we did, we do a little bit different. We heated. This has been heated up, and you can feel the heat. It's quite, quite a bit of heat there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some in the pan. Now the idea of heating it up is to open up the pores before putting the oil in. Okay, you want to heat it up. It's pretty hot. Just gonna rub it in the pan and the skillet off it. Okay. This handle's pretty hot, so I gotta hold it with a paper towel. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over. There's no fire on there right now. Get this in there real good.
This is also cleaning the pan somewhat. Continue to wipe it real good. It's hot, it's pretty hot. Keep switching the cloth around. Okay. Now this is a treated pan. This is a, a eight inch that I use. It's a newer pan that I use to cook eggs and different things with. It's not an old one like this one. Okay, so for round two, we have the fire on right now. It's pretty hot. We have uh, some flaxseed oil in the pan, quite a bit. I'm just going to in. When you heat it up, it's going to open up the pores in the iron and it's going to allow it to, the flaxseed oil to go into the pores. Flaxseed is a very high, high temperature, better than olive oil or any of the other oils. It's hot. Quite a bit hot. Make sure we get the flour on it. Wiping down both the front, the back, the insides. Now we're gonna let it heat up for a little bit. Then we don't want it to smoke. Then we're just going to shut the fire off. See, flaxseed oil doesn't smoke like uh, olive oil. And olive oil right now would be smoking like crazy. It's hot. All right, very hot. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut it off before it starts smoking. Shut the fire off. And we're going to let it cool, totally cool down. Leave it on the stove, let it cool down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this several times. It's getting a little smoke. It's getting a little bit of smoke. Okay. It's not a lot, a lot of smoke. Tiny amount of smoke. We're going to stop it once it starts to smoke a little bit. Okay. Now we're just going to let it cool down. Totally cool down. We're going to do this about four or five times on the stove top. Then, get this out of there, it could be a fire hazard. Then, we're going to do it again and we're going to put it in the oven upside down and we're going to bake it on probably about 400 degrees for an hour. And then we're going to shut off the oven and let it cool down in the oven. And we're going to do that probably three times. We're going to try that three times. And then we'll see what type of uh, type of finish we have on our pot. Our skillet, I should say. Well, for those interested in my stove, this is a Norge. Probably from the 30s, I would guess. 
Like I said, I re-chromed all of these knobs. I had all that re -chrome. Like I said, I paid $75 for it. Okay. Uh, and then I re-chromed everything. But I didn't re-chrome this. I didn't have to re-chrome these ends. And I, I just cleaned all this up good. Uh, we took the stove apart and made sure all the everything was connected tight. And it has pilot lights. And I was going to see about getting a kit and converting it over to the electric spark. Now, we do have a powerful range hood here on top of it. Now the range hood, uh, this, this thing was special ordered because we really wanted a, a, a range hood with a lot of a lot of power as far as the vents, the vents go. And there's LED lights in the range hood and it matches the stove. But we've been cooking on this thing for 15 years and it was old when we got it. So it's, it's a really good stove. Anybody interested in getting them one, <laughs> you really, really will enjoy it. The only drawback, like I said, is the uh, pilot lights. It has pilot lights. And uh, if one of them goes out, you'll smell the gas in your house. Which happens every now and then, not too often. But it definitely cooks well. So that's how we do that's what we did with our little stove here. That deep pot right there, I'm fixing to do a blooming onion. I'm fixing to cook a blooming onion in this in this pot right here. Once I strain the grease, that's canola oil. That's pretty deep, too. We're gonna cook a blooming onion. Okay, we finished seasoning our skillet. What we did, we we're gonna do it five times on the stove top, but we didn't. We only did it three times. We did it three times in the oven. What we did, we wiped it down real good with flaxseed oil. Of course, we heated it up like we showed before on the uh, stove top. Then we wiped it down with a generous amount of flaxseed oil. And then we stuck it in the oven, we put it in the oven, Set our temperature at 350 for 30 minutes with the pot upside down. We let it totally cool down to room temperature in the oven. Then we repeat it. Wiped it down real good, put it back in the oven, put it at 350 for another 30 minutes. Then let it cool down again to room temperature. Repeated it, wiped it down, but this time we we're also at 350, but we left it in for one hour. And it really come out good. Really, really good. Now to care for these pots, it's got a real good coating in it, real good seasoning. To care for the pot, what you want to do is you want to wash it down, soap and water. Don't use any scouring pads or anything like that. Dry it good, and then put it on the oven. What I'm gonna do is put mine in the oven, turn it on just a little bit, or the stove, and uh, get the water out of it. And then wipe it down with oil. Doesn't have to be flaxseed oil. Uh, canola oil would work good. Or bacon grease or something like that. Wipe it down good. And each time you use it. Now the more you use it, the better it's gonna get. Now this is ready to go. This, this really come out great. There's a little skillet. This is a newer skillet that we, we bought. Uh, use this for eggs and just little things. A little, just want a little bit of cornbread. Use that on there. Now this thing was seasoned, but we re-seasoned it. And it needs to be se actually seasoned more. As you can tell it's starting to turn a little brown that we re we used the flaxseed on it. But that's how we do it. It really come out good. It really come out great.
a little pot we're fixing to cook a blooming onion in. Need to strain the grease. This is canola oil. I'll do a blooming onion. Anyway, our skillet really come on good. Now here's a good way to season your pan. A little sausage in there. Put on real, real low. Okay. Cut it up. And then we're going to cover it. And let it slow cook. Now the sausage. This is the sausage. It is some very, very good sausage. Uh, it's already cooked, you just need to heat it up, but I'll, I'll cook it. And uh, you get it into this, this is, this is some good stuff. I think it's like $17 for two, 2.14 ounces. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 pounds, 14 ounces. And there's one good taste of sausage. I'm a sausage eater, I'll tell you what. It's good. We bought the sausage at uh, Sam's Club. So anyway, this is good for seasoning. Now what I did, sausage makes its own grease. But what I did, I put a little bit until it got started. Put a little bit of my flax, flaxseed oil in it. Anyway, seasoning the pan. 